Welcome to Counter-Strike Mapping Academy. I'm your host, Sammy Chimona, he, he, al, UV. This is the ultimate UV operation guide and wouldn't have been possible without help from the community. Shout out to GCAF, Backscratch, and Monomai for their input. In this tutorial, we will explore all the possible commands for UV manipulations. Let's begin by selecting a material to use. We can change our active material by clicking on Browse and searching for the material you want. For this tutorial, we will use the Panorama World Panel with no backface to show how the UV mapping operations work. Apply Current Material will apply the selected active material onto the face. This will automatically align the new material to the UVs that were on the face with the previous material. Lift Material will take the material that the mouse cursor is hovering over and make that the active material. Paint Material will take the active material and apply it directly to the face that the mouse is hovering over. The previous UVs will be applied to the new material. To wrap texture to the selected faces, with the face selected, hold down Alt and right click on the face you want to extend the UV settings onto. To wrap texture to selection, this works in the opposite direction as wrap texture. With this operation, select the targeted faces that you want to change on mass. Hold down Alt and Shift, then right click on the material and UV you want to extract from to apply to the targeted faces. To flip the textures horizontally, select the faces that you want to flip and press Alt D. To flip the textures vertically, select the faces that you want to flip and press Alt-E. You can manually set the UV of the applied material by modifying the X and Y scale under the texture state bar. Shift will nudge the material and is defined in hammer units at a scale of 1 8th. That means to shift something 8 units, you will need a value of 64. Rotate will reposition your material specified by the number of degrees entered in. These values can also be changed under the Modify Texture operations that are coming up. Align to Grid will map the UV to the grid. This is especially helpful if the material has been created with the grid in mind. For example, here each colored square represents 32 units, broken up in increments of 8 units. Align to Face will apply the UV so that it matches the angle of the mesh and is useful for shapes such as cylinders. Align to View will change the UV based on the angle of the camera in the currently selected viewport. Align to Cylinder V axis will orient the Z direction of the cylinder to be the direction that it applies the material to. Align to Cylinder U axes will orient the Z direction of the cylinder to be the direction that it applies the material to. Updated Subdivision UVs will take the material that has been applied onto the mesh and move it to better fit the changes that you made with displacements. Scale X and Y will scale the applied material in exponential increments with every click. You can also manually set the scale multiplier if you would like. Using these buttons, you can shift the material plane in either direction. You can fine tune the increments in the texture state box. Rotate will change the angle of the applied UV based on the currently selected angle. Fit allows you to control on the selected face how many times and across what plane you would like the material to be mapped. Justify will alter the shift of the UV so that it is flush up against the desired range. This keeps the applied UV scale and rotation of the face. This checkbox is used when multiple faces are selected. This will apply the selected operation as if the entirety of the selection was one giant face. Weld UVs will try to match the materials where the vertex meets to make it appear seamless. 
Weld UVs in edges mode will match the UVs along the edge so that the material appears seamless in its transition from one face to the next. You can have multiple touching edges selected to create a seamless application of the materials. UV peel is an operation that must be performed on faces that have been separated into their own mesh. In order to contour the material around the selected edge, we separate it in face mode into its own separate mesh. Select the edge that you would like the origin of the UV peel to begin. Select whether you want to peel to start at the U axis or the V axis. The U axis runs along left to right, and the V axis runs along up to down. Modify the U repeats and V repeats to determine how many times you want the material to be tiled across the ring. The U and V offset determines the number of hammer units that the material will be shifted from the UV peel. Enabling World Space will map the UV out according to how it fits if it were aligned to the grid. With World Space enabled, the U and V repeats will become scalars, with one being the normal scale level and higher numbers increasing the projection. Find slash replace materials will search out every face that currently has material either through the current selection, everything in the map currently visible, and everything in the map including those that are hidden. You can auto-select the faces with those materials by pressing mark, and then click replace to change them to the desired material. The fast texture tool gives ultimate control over UV manipulation. The yellow outline defines a boundary of which specific part of the material you would like to apply. You can apply the material onto multiple faces if they are on the same mesh with closed edges between them. You can also drag the boundary itself across the UV to match the shape of the material. Increase and decrease the grid size to fine tune how precise you want your boundary to be. If you wanted to, you could use the fast texture tool for the entirety of the map with how robust this operation is. Let's break down all the possible functions that this can give us. Unwrap square will transform the boundaries defined as a square onto the selected face. If you have multiple faces, it will conform to the entire selection. This will unwrap the selected face and attempt to fit them onto the rectangle. Unwrap conforming will apply the material onto the faces directly ignoring the boundary shape. The shape of the faces are shown on the grid selection with the white outline. This will unwrap the selected faces attempting to minimize distortion. Follow quads will do its best to conform the material to edges that have been straightened. This can reduce the squeeze effect that unwrapping as a square may show. Planar will project the material that is based on the current view. You can move around and update the view based on your current selected view camera angle. Use Existing will use the existing UVs of the selected faces, but fit them onto the current rectangle. Faces will have their UV information from their current selection maintained. Choose along which axis you want the target faces to be aligned with the material on. Remember that U is horizontal and V is vertical. Flip horizontal and flip vertical will flip the material on the target faces accordingly. Pick edge allows you to use the selector to choose which face edge you would like to align your axis to. Fit to Rectangle will fit the target faces with the boundary on the fast texture grid. World Scale will map the UV of the targeted faces to the default UV of the material that is projected onto the grid. Tile UV will enable the tiling settings that give you control over what direction and how often the tiling occurs. Maintain Aspect Ratio will map the material based on its current UV. You can change the number of times you want to repeat the material across the target faces by using the slider or typing in a desired value. Inset XY allows you to skew the material boundaries. This value must be under 32 and is great for fine-tuning your perimeter projection. 
Hot spotting is an operation that takes advantage of predefined wrecks and can utilize trim materials. As of right now, there is no master trim included in CS2 by default. You will need to manually install it in order for the following operations to work correctly. Download the zip file located in the video description and unzip them to your content slash CSGO folder. With this properly installed, you can now take advantage of the trim sheets included. To search for materials that are defined as hotspots, type subrect in your materials filter to search for the VMAT key subrect definition. Selecting this will sort out all the available materials. These hotspot trim sheets define the dimension of how the editor will try to best fit the targeted faces with the available formats. You can also save your search and pull it up later with the Save Search feature. To apply the hotspots, select a face that you want to apply it to and press Alt-H. The material will automatically try to find the best fit. If you select multiple faces and press Alt-H, it will apply the material across the entire targeted selection if Apply to Face Individually is unchecked. Checking this option will make the editor treat each face as its own individual hotspot. If the normals are defined as hard normals, the editor will automatically apply it to each face defined by these hard normals individually. Allow randomization will give each face the opportunity to select a random trim spot that closely fits its dimensions. This can be helpful if you are trying to create what looks like variation in sequential hotspotting. Apply Active Material will apply the selection to the targeted faces. Unchecking this will keep the current material on the selected face without changing it to the active material. Tiling Mode allows us to determine whether or not to tile adjacent hotspots. You can set it to Never Tile, Always Tile, and automatically determine if it is going to tile the trim. Mapping mode allows us to determine how to conform the boundaries of the hotspots, similar to fast texturing. Setting it to square will unwrap the face and attempt to make it fit the rectangle. Setting it to conforming will unwrap the selected faces, attempting to minimize distortion. Setting this to automatic will let the editor attempt to best fit. If Preserve Materials is checked, materials that are different will not be able to be combined into the same faces. Unchecking this will allow you to combine different materials into the same face. If Preserve UVs is checked, faces that have different UVs will not be combined. Unchecking this will allow you to combine faces with different UVs on them. If Skip Subdivided Faces is enabled, the editor will ignore any subdivided faces when trying to combine them. Unchecking this will allow you to combine faces that are subdivided with non-subdivided faces. Texture Lock will lock the UV when you move the mesh around. Texture Lock Scale will lock the UV setting of each face so that it conforms to the new dimensions. Texture Lock Component Manipulations will lock the UV of the face so that it is manipulated when you pull on any vertices or edge. Texture Projection allows us to cast a two-dimensional projection onto a three-dimensional mesh. Select the mesh that you would like to have the material projected onto, and click on the Texture Projection tool to get started. You can change the projection mode to better wrap UVs if you are projecting onto a cylinder. Switch between planar and cylinder for your best fit. Translate allows us to move where the mesh will be projected onto. The purple square represents the dimensions of the material and its angle. Rotate will allow us to change the planar projection of the purple square. Axis mapping will allow us to indicate whether to use a U or V plane as the primary axes. 
Under Settings, you can enter Manual Mode to determine the size of the dimensions of the projection, as well as the offset determined in hammer units. You can manually determine how many times the material repeats itself across the U and V axes, or have it locked into World, which uses the World Grid. Reset Gizmo to Work Plane will align the gizmo with your current work plane that is being used. Reset Gizmo to Selection will center your gizmo on the mesh that has been selected. To apply all the adjustments made while in Texture Projection Mode, click Finish. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on UV Operations. Please like, subscribe, and join our Discord for more help, and to participate in all of our community events, play our games, and test out maps.